The most bone-chilling thing from Snowden's leaks about the National Security Agency is that all your suspicions about government spying are actually true. These revelations, no doubt, show the lengths governments go to keep their sketchy operations from the public. Uh, I've been uh, a systems engineer, systems administrator, uh, senior advisor uh, for the uh, Central Intelligence Agency, solutions consultant, and a uh, telecommunications information systems officer. Now, this isn't the first time Snowden's name has been attached to highly classified government documents. So what mind-bending information has he come across this time? Join us in this video as we explore Edward Snowden, once again, revealing terrifying government secrets in a new chilling message. Whistleblowing have always challenged governments. Whistleblowing has a knack for stirring things up in governments, uncovering secrets, and shining a light on crucial issues, especially in the United States. It's not just about businesses. Even government agencies face the heat when folks decide to spill the beans with hidden documents. In today's digital age, thanks to the internet boom since the mid-1980s, whistleblowing has become more common. Many leaks have targeted U.S. government bodies like NASA, NSA, and CIA. But the catch here is that online whistleblowers often play it safe by staying anonymous, making their claims easy to miss. Still, Brave individuals like the well-known whistleblower Edward Snowden, an American IT expert, have taken the stage amid various scandals. Snowden got even more attention after the Congress meetings in July 2023. Three witnesses dropped bombshell claims about the government hiding information on aliens and UFOs. They insisted that extraterrestrial beings were living among us, with David Grush revealing the government's practice of collecting alien samples for exploitation and reverse engineering. These revelations from the Congress meetings have set the world abuzz. Many people have also started reconsidering whether past leaks painting the government in a bad light were also true. Edward Snowden, along with other gutsy Americans, keeps peeling back the layers of secrecy within the U.S. government. For Snowden, it's not a one-and-done deal. He's on a continuous mission to uncover hidden truths within positions of power, where Snowden's journey began. Edward Snowden was your typical American computer expert and used to punch the clock at the National Security Agency, NSA. Back in 2013, while still on the job, he decided to expose a ton of classified info. Now, you might be wondering, why would someone dive headfirst into exposing national secrets? Well, it boiled down to Snowden's strong sense of ethics. You see, Snowden wasn't thrilled about some of the tasks and programs he got mixed up in. When he tried to voice his ethical concerns through the proper channels, it was mostly like talking to a brick wall. Frustrated, he decided to unofficially retire and embarked on a risky mission, sharing top-secret documents online and with journalists. Risky move, but Snowden went for it, and surprisingly, a bunch of Americans had his back. They were curious about the government's hidden stash, and Snowden handed them the answers. Some folks even hit the streets with signs that screamed, Thank you, Snowden! His actions didn't just shake things up for the American public, they also stirred the pot between nations. Fast forward to January 2014, and Snowden was making waves on the internet. The Washington Post spilled the tea that the NSA was cooking up a quantum computer, priced at $80 million. Edward Snowden revealed some classified documents that painted a picture of this colossal metal box holding a supercomputer under the secret code name, Penetrating Hard Targets. This project was all about breezing through security roadblocks, zipping through codes, and encryptions at warp speed. It didn't just stop there. Snowden also found that this supercomputer could crack through RSA encryptions, the gold standard for keeping public data safe. Now, as of 2023, your run-of-the-mill computer can't pull off this stunt. It needs a quantum leap in computing power and a boatload of resources to even take a swing at it. But the question here is, what if the NSA has already perfected the project and started hacking away without us knowing? Sadly, Snowden isn't around to give us some information on that matter anymore. Apart from that, though, Snowden has made some remarkable revelations over the years that have turned people's feelings towards the U.S. government even more sour. The most controversial take. One of the things Snowden shared that caused a lot of arguments was Project Dishfire. It's a secret worldwide surveillance program by the NSA, and the government communication headquarters. This program collects millions of text messages daily from phone users worldwide without them knowing. When Snowden talked about it, an NSA spokesperson said the program only deals with lawfully collected data. 
but many people didn't like this, especially because no one knew about it before. Even though the NSA said they didn't use the data for anything shady, people felt uneasy knowing their private information was stored in some agency database. Additionally, it came out that Verizon, a top wireless network operator in the US, had to give the agency caller details every day, including the time, place, and duration of calls. People were upset about all this surveillance, but the agency tried hard to prove it was for everyone's safety. There were rumors that the agents shared this data with the British intelligence agency. Many thought this violated personal rights, calling it not just unethical, but also against the law. Some people even said the NSA might use this info to find out about users' credit card details, addresses, and other personal things. The NSA got into real trouble because of Edward Snowden and his revelations. But Snowden didn't slow down. Snowden's expedition continues. The world was shaken when Snowden revealed some pretty problematic secrets the NSA and GCHQ were trying to hide. Apparently they had broken into a big Dutch company that makes most of the world's SIM cards. This company cranks out about 2 billion SIM cards each year for big phone companies like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and others. Snowden shared documents that clearly showed how this hack gave the NSA access to the secret codes for these SIM cards. Basically, it means they could sneak past the security set up by the phone companies and listen in on both calls and data from SIM card users. Now the company hit back. Their defense was that they had faced two hack attempts, probably from the NSA and GCHQ, but they insisted that the hacks didn't work. Of course, the NSA wasn't happy with Snowden, but at that point, Snowden had played his cards so well that no government agency could touch him. You see, he had a smart plan. In an interview once, Snowden said that he set up a system. If anything happened to him, all the government secrets he had would spill out instantly. To break it down, he made sure certain documents would be sent automatically to other big-shot whistleblowers who would keep the ball rolling. He even hinted at having more secrets up his sleeve. Having a foolproof plan not only allowed Snowden to not get harmed by any government agency for exposing them, but it also allowed him to continue revealing more government secrets. Why the NSA kept coming under more fire In 2013, the NSA faced serious questions again when Snowden disclosed that the agency had tapped into 35 phones of high-ranking officials from different countries, including Spain, Germany, and France. Snowden shared this information in October 2013, which led to a political standoff between the US and Germany. Thanks to Snowden's revelation, even Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel discovered her phone was bugged. She was definitely not happy about it. Merkel quickly criticized the US government for this act, even though Germany and the US were considered friendly nations at the time. But there's more to the story. It turned out that the NSA was also monitoring the phone calls of regular people, especially in Spain, where over 60 million phone calls were monitored in a single month. Brazil was also closely watched by the NSA for unknown reasons, leading the Brazilian president to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with then-President Barack Obama to address the issue. Seeing how sensitive the information Snowden was exposing really was, it is no surprise that he's one of the few Americans known for standing up and revealing secrets within the government. While some leaders and folks may not like what he revealed, there are people who see him as a hero. But Snowden isn't the only one doing this. Another person in the spotlight for exposing government secrets is Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar's reveals have shaken the world. Let's dive into Bob Lazar's story from the 1980s a tale that still keeps us hooked with its focus on aliens and UFOs. It's a mix of intrigue and a touch of the uncanny that has kept people talking. Lazar takes us into the nuts and bolts of alien spacecraft propulsion. Picture this, a gravity amplifier under UFOs, making them spin, turn sharply, and zip through the skies. But here's the kicker. These UFOs can change their flight positions, even fly belly first. Quite the twist from the classic flying saucers and sci-fi flicks. Lazar even throws in the idea that aliens might be able to tweak the look of their ships, a concept that has some experts and fans thinking about UFO shape-shifting. Now, let's talk about Element 115, a real head-scratcher. Lazar claims aliens use it for their tech, calling it Ununpentium. At first, skeptics raised eyebrows because our periodic table only has around 100 elements. Surprise, surprise, the scientific gang managed to create and study this element, officially slotting it into the periodic table. 
This heavy and radioactive creation, Lazar says, is the go-to fuel for those alien spaceships. Bob Lazar also shared details about the insides of UFOs. He said these crafts had bodies made of liquid titanium, and the way the parts were put together was strange. No bolts, nuts, or seams. It seemed like the whole body was a single piece, which frankly seemed impossible considering that modern-day tech in our world has not reached that type of engineering. Lazar even suggested that aliens might have used 3D printing for their advanced technology. According to him, there were nine captured UFOs at Area 51, each with different designs, from a jello mold to a flat disc. What's interesting is that Lazar claimed the Tic Tac UFO discussed in a recent Congress hearing resembled the one he worked on at Area 51. He wasn't sure if all UFOs spotted were made by the same aliens, but he revealed that the ones he worked on came from a specific place the Zeta Reticuli star system. For those of you who don't know, the Zeta Reticuli star system is located in a faint constellation called the Reticulum and has two stars similar to the Sun. Interestingly, in 1961, alien abductees Barney and Betty Hill claimed their abductors came from a place with two stars and drew a map that resembled the Zeta Reticuli system. This raises questions about whether the captured aliens matched those abductors and if Lazar worked on their spacecraft. There is also another pressing question you can't help but ask when considering the information Lazar is bringing to the table. Why do many people believe Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar's story gains credibility from the mystery surrounding his background records. Unlike most people, there's no trace of his origins. None of his school history or work records check out either. Some doubt his tales because of his lack of background, while others, including Lazar himself, believe the government deliberately erased his records. The idea is that Lazar and his colleagues at Area 51 had their identities wiped clean to discredit them as punishment for exposing classified information. Edward Snowden also experienced threats for being a whistleblower. He was eventually forced to leave the US and seek refuge in Russia. Despite living in exile, though, Snowden said he had no regrets during a 2023 interview. As more whistleblowing stories align with evidence from various sources, people have started to question what's true and what's not. The revelation of secrets, from seemingly harmless to potentially threatening our existence, definitely prompts us to see whether this information is kept from the public for the collective good or other motives. Whistleblowing, once taken for granted, now challenges us to reconsider what we know. Until next time.